Hello, mankind that reads. It's great to be reunited with you in this channel where the star is the book. Today, I would like to talk to you about a pleasurable reading experience I had in the shape of this book, European Education by the French author Romain Gary and senior in the French edition. The book was written in 1943, in the midst of World War II, and it is set in World War II. Uh, Gary knew what he was writing about. He was an, an officer in the French army, and he fought against the Nazis. Apparently, he once even challenged good old Clint Eastwood himself to a duel, because Clint took some liberties with his then-wife, Jean Seberg. So, the book tells the story, the coming-of-age story of Yannick. Um, Yannick is a Polish teenager and he joins the resistance against the occupying German army. The opening scene of the book, he says farewell to his father, but that farewell is left suspended, which has a ghost-like presence throughout the rest of the book, thus framing the narrative in a very moving way. Yannick lives in a hideout in the forest, he eats only potatoes, until by chance he finally he meets some partisans. Partisans, of course, come in all shapes, size, sizes and walks of life. Uh, listen to this description of his chance encounter with the partisans on page 33. There was Machorka, a Greek Orthodox peasant of Baranovsky. He compared the forest to the catacombs and the partisans to the first Christians. This part reminded me of the personal story of Pope John Paul II, who, also in World War II, was a man of great Catholic courage. Nature seems to join forces with the resistance. They form a sort of pantheist bond. Listen to this on page 50. Freedom is the child of the forests. That's where she was born. That's where she returns to hide when things go wrong. Yannick grows and quickly learns the hazardous ropes of uh, fighting the Nazis. Listen to this on page 56. He seemed to be too young for everything, except hunger, cold and bullets. Uh, the title, European Education, the title refers to the double nature of man, to the fact that man is capable of appalling brutality and at the same time redeeming acts of kindness and beauty. Uh, Gary uh, writes about the fact that uh, when it comes to brutality, every time a village is raised to the ground, every time uh, somebody's father is killed and executed, every time hostages are taken, somebody else learns a trade of violence, learns a culture of retribution, of retaliation, that, and that's a sort of European education of hatred. Also, on the redeeming aspects of mankind, this is what he has to write about on page 65. The truth is, there are moments in history, moments like the ones we live in right now, where everything's stopping man from despairing, everything that allows him to believe and to keep on living, needs a hideout, needs a refuge. That refuge can sometimes be a poem, a song, a music, a book. I would wish that my book would be one of those refuges, that in opening it, after the war, when all is over, men will still find their goods intact, that they know that they cannot be forced to live like peace, they cannot be forced to despair. Um, the book also portrays in a very believable and dramatic way the constant tension between the will to fight and resist and the will to concede and appease. Both sides of a crumbling society, the side of the villagers, and the side of the partisans clash because of that. Every time the partisans leave the forest and exert some sort of violence against the Nazis, the Nazis then retaliate against the villagers. And I thought that that part was wonderfully portrayed by Gary in the book. Um, I also found several interesting talking points in the book. Um, the first one being the style itself. 
Um, due to the fact that it was written in 1943, in the midst of war, I thought it would portray a sort of heroic representation of resistance, but it's the exact opposite that struck me. In the book, self-sacrifice is never lauded because the living are hardly worthy of it. Uh, nobody ever dies in a blaze of, of glory. Nobody ever dies in a grand eloquent fa fashion. In fact, almost all of the death scenes are left hanging, are left suspended. Gary never describes the coup de grace, the final shot, the final blow, and it's up to the reader's imagination to consummate most of the killings. This, of course, refers to the banality of evil in the context of war. I've always found interesting how man changes perspectives on violence depending on whether, he not, uh, whether or not he lives in peaceful times. In peaceful times, a single act of violence can sometimes move a nation to tears, whereas in war, death on an industrial scale hardly sometimes even deserves a footnote. Uh, the other interesting talking point I found is that future always tends to debunk idealism. That's why hope is so overrated. Listen to this on page 214. Patriotism is the love of our community. Nationalism is the hatred of others. The Russians, the Americans, all of them. There's a great brotherhood preparing the world. The Germans have accomplished at least that. Of course, soon Cold War um, debunked this idealism, this idea of uh, a possible brotherhood. Another... Uh, topic, interesting topic I found in the book, is the representation of extreme famine. People will sacrifice everything to avoid hunger, especially their own future. There's a sinister episode in the book where a man rats out on his neighbors, accusing them of being partisans, even though they were not partisans, just so he can collect uh, a sack of potatoes that was being offered by the Nazis as we warred in a karmic twist of events. This sack of potatoes is then stolen from him by the partisans. The wife of the whistleblower even screams to the partisans to kill him, to kill the whistleblower, but to leave the sack of potatoes there. So extreme starvation, it turns everything upside down. So in the end, Yannick chooses uh, historical sites with a twofold meaning of the title. I thought that the ending is, uh, in a classical and in a formal sense, extremely well accomplished. The part where he writes about the ends is absolutely amazing. But oops, I've said enough. It's up to you to discover. So that's a wrap. Hope you kind folks enjoyed. Hope to see you again in the next review. If you've enjoyed the content, please hit the thumbs up on YouTube and share the video on social media. Until then, until the next review, I wish you all of the best and please read on. There are millions of shackled ideas hidden in closed books, so please, please be a liberator. See ya!